everyone, and welcome to another video by Liminal Spaces. Today I'm going to be talking about The Mali System by Miriam Allen DeFord. And this, of course, is part of the anthology Dangerous Visions, which is edited by Harlan Ellison. And like most of the other stories in this book, Ellison talks a little bit about the author um, before her story, gives a little bit of a preface before she writes her story. Um, and it was interesting to me because he seemed to focus on the fact that uh, she was very, very old when uh, when he asked her to write the story for this book. Uh, and he talks about her lovingly as being uh, incredibly strong and stubborn and um, able to really control the situation in a room. And I could tell that he had a lot of respect for her. Um, but I was interested right away in, in, in her and a little bit about her uh, when I read his review, especially because um, she seems to be the, at the time, the oldest writer or the oldest contributor to this anthology. Um, and I looked it up and she was born in 1888. So she would be almost 80, I believe, or 80, uh, when she wrote this story for this anthology. Um, and she was, uh, she often described herself as a born feminist and was active in the women's suffrage uh, movement before the 19, or before 1920. Um, so really, truly a very interesting writer all the way around. She's mainly known for mystery stories, uh, but second is, is sci-fi. Those are kind of the two genres that she did most of her work in. Um, so I had done all this research before I, I cracked open this story, uh, and the story was shocking, to say the least. It opens with a description of a crime that is the most heinous crime you can think of. I'm not going to go into detail, but for those of you that are reading along, you can, you can, I'm sure, uh, understand what I'm talking about when I say this is the most heinous of crimes that you can imagine. And that is followed by four other examples of heinous crimes. Uh, and so there's five total and they are shocking they are disturbing uh this is the most uncomfortable sci-fi read i've ever had um it it turned my stomach it shot my empathy through the roof i felt terrible for the victims of these crimes um and that i think before i get too deep into this that in itself shows how good of a writer DeFord is uh, right off the bat because um, she was able to make me feel these incredible emotions and these stomach-turning shock. Um, and she did it all with an economy of language that is just incredible. It's like five microfictions describing terrifying crimes um, and they're all very very well written but you have to have the stomach for that kind of stuff because the shock value is through the roof uh, and whenever I see shock value that goes that all out I really feel like that it has to earn its place Right, because for me, anything that does anything just for the sake of doing it comes out a little pretentious. Uh, like um, just putting shocking, gory scenes into something so that you can gross out your audience. I'm sorry, my cat's making noise over here. I think he's having allergies. Um, just grossing people out for the sake of grossing them out. Um, in my opinion, and please note this is all opinion, uh, doesn't really um, have any artistic value. So I'm happy to report that in this case, DeFord absolutely um, put these shocking scenes in for a reason to, to make a, a point through her story. Um, and 
from here on out, I'm going to spoil the story. It is very short. It's a 10-page story. Uh, if you'd like to pause here and go read it, you're more than welcome to. Uh, that would also give you kind of the experience of how shocking these five uh, descriptions of the crimes are. So it turns out that these crimes are being re relived by people who are incarcerated in prison in the future. And there's a new system called the Mali system, and they're only using it on people that have committed extreme crimes. And the Mali system is basically where they take um, prisoners and put them in a machine where they relive the crime. And they have to do this once a day, uh, where they go in and relieve the crime. And they have to do this for the entirety of their incarceration. Um, and in this society, incarceration, I think, only goes up, even for a lifetime, to about 12 years. Um, and she, the, the, it's, it's uh, I think a visiting journalist is visiting the prison, talking to the warden of the prison about the Mali system. Uh, and the warden says, yeah, at first they kind of get a kick out of reliving their crimes. Um, and then day after day, they start to become commonplace. And then slowly over time, they start to feel remorse and sadness and regret. Um, and then they start to hate what they've done. But still, they have to uh, relive these crimes daily and, until the the act of reliving them is just completely traumatizing to them. Uh, and DeFord brings up an interesting question in that she is wondering if this is, and she does it through the, the voice of the journalist, uh, wondering if this is a system that has any use for society, right? Like making the a criminal relive their crime over and over again, what can that do for society? It's definitely a good concept for punishment, right? Um, but does it help the uh, the criminal uh, ever be able to rejoin society, which I found a bit weird at this point in the story because these are crimes so heinous, I don't see how these people could ever rejoin society, but that might be my bias on the way that I look at uh, crime and incarceration. But these crimes are the type of crimes that, that people should never ever uh be free on the streets again, in my opinion. Um, but the warden says, oh, these these people that are part of this system never are free again because this drives them insane. All the ones that have been released after doing the, uh, the Mali system have ended up in mental hospitals because the process of having to relive their crime each day is enough to drive them insane. Um, so I like the, the, the basic concept of the, the story. Um, I like the concept of forcing someone to stare their actions in, in the face as they slowly learn how despicable and how awful it was. Um, and it really works as a punishment. Of course, DeFord leaves us afterwards wondering why the process is even done at all. Um, and I even can see the reason for this, these five descriptions of crimes so disgusting that, that I never really would want to, uh, to go through them. So when I rate this book, I, 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 Again, I feel like I think I did this with uh, with Robert Silverberg. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to give this a rating, and the reason I'm not going to give it a rating is because I believe that the point of this story makes sense. I believe that what she's trying to say makes sense. I, however, personally don't want to read about people committing the most atrocious crimes I can think of. It's not my cup of tea. 
uh, and she can't help that. That's not the writer's fault. So I don't feel that my opinion on it matters. It shouldn't matter, right? Because it's I'm not the type of audience that would enjoy this. Um, so I'm going to refrain from grading this uh, and just say that if you are interested in t- true crime or interested in how we, and this isn't true crime, of course, this is still science fiction, interested in how to punish criminals and that kind of stuff, you might really enjoy this story. Uh, and it's it's very well written. But for me, no thank you. Uh, it is not my style. Um, in fact, I've made the choice that I'm actually going to uh, stop reading this anthology for a while. I'm going to take a break. Um, and I don't know if that's a break that means I'm not going to come back to it or, uh, if it's just means I'm going to give it a while and, and come back to it. We'll see. And I'll tell you the, or I'll give you the reasons why I'm, I'm taking a a break from this. Uh, number one, it seems to me that I misunderstood the type of writing I was going to see in this book. Everybody describes it as the originator of American, of the American new wave in science fiction, which it is. It absolutely is. But the way that I understand the new wave of science fiction um, is not this. Um... And I don't know where the the wires got crossed. When I think of the new wave of science fiction, I of course think of Philip K. Dick and Roger Zelazny. And I'm not huge. I'm not incredibly well read in science fiction. Um, this journey that that I've started taking of reading all these science fiction books and making these videos is because I am interested in reading science fiction. So I'm I'm kind of breaking into all these. Um, with you guys throughout this process. Um, So that's this, this to me, I feel like all the writers interpreted what Harlan was asking of them. Uh, All of them interpreted it to write about the most shocking, violent things you can think about. And that is, not an area that I, I like to go down. Also, after reading this story, I looked ahead a little bit uh, at the stories that I was going to be reading next, and I, I looked at, I did a little research on all of them just to kind of figure out what critics have said about them uh, at the time and what they themselves have said about their stories in this anthology because I am interested in seeing how people looked at it at the time and how people look at it now if they look back on it and I found some interesting things for instance um, when Al, uh, Algus Burtis and I don't know if I said his name right uh, correct me in the comic comments if I said it wrong said about Paul Anderson's story in this utopia Anderson wrote better when she when he is not attempting to shock people. I think he could do best by contenting himself to lead people to think as he has been doing for many years now. That's usually shock enough. So it's interesting because he's brought out the concept that for this specific anthology, Anderson is writing to shock people instead of to get people to think, which is usually shocking enough. Um, And then what really kind of cemented this for me was uh, Philip K. Dick's response in looking back at his story in this anthology. I think with this story, I managed to offend everyone, which seemed at the time to be a good idea, which, but which I've regretted since. Again, I see a writer that I really like trying to shock for this particular anthology and it's made me realize that Harlan Ellison was really truly looking to change sci-fi but he was looking to do that through shock and shock is a a good way to 
incite a revolution to of, of change in literature but it's not it's not what i'm looking for and more specifically I feel like this isn't the best place to start to be introduced to writers that I am interested in reading more of their stuff because I'm going to get their most shocking ideas. Uh, I'm going to get their writing through Ellison's concept. Um, I think about Philip Jose Farmer and wonder if I had read To Your Scattered Bodies Go as I planned to before Writers of the Purple Wage, would I have a different view on Farmer? And of course, I am going to read To Your Scattered Bodies Go in the future, so we will find out. Um, but yeah, I just feel I'm being introduced to science fiction writers that are just giants in the field, but I'm not getting a really accurate representation of the type of work they usually do because they're trying to fit the theme of this anthology, which is more and more from what I can see to shock the reader by violent acts of murder and assault that aren't enjoyable to read for me, for me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to move on to different short stories. I can't decide if I'm going to find another anthology or just do short stories, uh, from different writers that I'm interested in, but I am going to take a break from this. And, uh, for that, I do apologize, but I've just kind of had enough of it. Thank you very much for watching this video to the end. If you liked it, please click like. If you like this kind of content, please click subscribe. We'll be doing a lot more of it in the future. Thank you so much for watching.